Hi, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt, where we talk about literature. Today, we're going to talk about how the Victorians lived. We will explore the concepts of modernity, urbanization, and commerce. So let's jump in. In addition to being the peak of the British Empire, this was also the time of the Great Exhibitions. Here again, you know, like the Eiffel Tower was built for one, for example. Um, there again, Britain was the star, the huge performer, the dominant force, um, proving their uh, superiority or progress on the world stage. Um, British manufacturing was absolutely dominant, taking raw materials from around the world, all of the colonies that they had power over, um, and producing refined goods in factories. Work, industry, and productivity were all very high values in their culture. Um, really coming from that Protestant background uh, for, with a primary emphasis on hard work. Uh, at the same time, human rights and workers' protection became a huge concern. Uh, throughout the area, legislation would be slowly enacted, almost in this trickling out form to improve working conditions, limit working hours, prevent exploitation of women and children. And all of this growth and industrialization led to the growth of the middle class as well, where this redistribution of wealth, this new influx of wealth, was going to the, this middle class that was factory owners and hard workers themselves. Um, so not only was the middle class growing in size, but also in wealth and as a result, of course, power. As social works began to be put into place, um, increasingly the middle-class factory owners began to realize how advantageous it was for them to have a well-fed, healthy, um, and robust working class. So exploiting them to such extremes is no longer advantageous. And the result was basically this idea of greater social mobility as there was a union between these um, two different class classes and their goals. It should come as no surprise then that cities grew. This is the urbanization that we've been talking about. This came along with a whole host of its own benefits and problems. The boom and bust economic growth as England sort of transitioned from this agrarian feudal system to uh, this city-based manufacturing economy was really a rough time, particularly for the working class. The working class were the ones who faced the brunt of those boom and busts economically and personally in their day-to-day -day lives. Likewise, sanitation, housing, education all struggled during this time and then, of course, became a point, point of public scrutiny as people sought solutions for them. Again, these two were solved, albeit more slowly than perhaps the people would have liked. Underground sewers were built in major cities. Tenement housing was regulated. 97% literacy rate was achieved. That's the highest it's ever been, or highest it had been up until that point in human history. Um, there you can see a proliferation of written materials as a result. So combined with steam-powered printing, which was always also invented during this time, you're going to have, you know, magazines, newspapers, uh, books, libraries, uh, all of this growing rapidly. And what I found really interesting was the advent of junk mail. But steam-powered printing presses weren't the only firsts of this era. To say that it was a time of massive progress would be an understatement. So consider the following. The railroad was built crisscrossing England. Thomas Arnold remarked that this was the end of the feudal state, that he realized with the railroad in particular that was the thing that was going to bring the end of the feudal system. Um, and this is a really important observation. The feudal system ties the working class to the land and therefore to the lord who owns that land geographically they're localized. And that geographic mobility that's opened up with railroads, uh, along with the economic opportunities within cities, is then going to make them independent from the land and the Lord, breaking down those long-standing ties that were geographic and wealth building. The destruction of the feudal system, combined with the social efforts to protect the working class, also contributed to this idea of social mobility, the crossing of social lines, as well as the crossing of geographic lines. One observation that I think is really important as well is that the Victorians would have described themselves as modern, perhaps more than anything else. 
we think of them as old-fashioned, perhaps because of their strict propriety and a uh, sense of morals and, and proper behavior. Um, and maybe even a little bit spooky. We have this spooky association with Victorian culture as well, probably because of their interest in spirituality and seances and that sort of thing, the occult. Um, but with the advent of the railroad, steamships, transatlantic steam journeys, uh, the telegram, the transatlantic telegram, the transatlantic radio signal, photography, phonographs, and all manner of inventions and progress, they would have definitely seen themselves as extremely modern. And in fact, this change coming so rapidly and so quickly and so much that it would have been almost overwhelming. In this sea of production, manufacturing, urbanization, growing trade and colonization and commerce, there was a vast proliferation of stuff. So I want to close this section with another awesome quote from the Longman Anthology. Quote, for the growing middle class, there was an Aladdin-like sense of wonderment at the astounding abundance of things. An incredible hodgepodge of inventions, gimmicks, and gadgets began to make up the familiar paraphernalia of modern life, including chain stores, washing and sewing machines, postage stamps, canned food, toothpaste, sidewalk newsstands, illustrated magazines and newspapers, typewriters, breakfast cereal, that one caught my attention, slide projectors, skin creams, diet pills, shampoo, ready-to-wear clothes, sneakers called plimsolls, and even a cumbersome prototype computer designed by Charles Babbage. If that doesn't sound awfully familiar and awfully modern, I don't know what does. So that's all that I have for you today. Next episode will be about what Victorians believed. We will cover politics, religion, science, you know, all that stuff that you should not be talking about during your family get-togethers over this, these holiday seasons. As always, if you get value out of these episodes, please consider giving us a like or subscribe. And if you wanna support this channel further, please consider becoming a patron. Links are always in the description box. Until next time, I'm Alexandra, and I'm still a bibliophile.